you can get fantastic results when you combine photo manipulation, photo stocks with 3D assets. Programs like Daz allow you to create custom characters and get exactly the results you need. I personally don't know how to do it, but our main man Christian Bentland does. So in this video, we're going to go through and have a look into Christian's workflow. If you're new here, welcome. We're not your typical Photoshop channel. We specialize in photo manipulation, digital art and advanced Photoshop techniques. So if that sounds like your kind of thing, be sure to like and subscribe as we put out new videos every week. It's free, easy and really supports the channel. Let's roll the video. Enjoy. Okay, guys. We've got a special treat for you today. We have Christian Bentalan, the cover Jedi, the Filipino phenom, the one and only, and he's here today to show you how he combines Daz with Photoshop to create book covers. So without any further ado, let's jump in and see the work in progress. So Christian, what we've got going on on the screen here today, can you explain to me what's going on here? So this is Daz, yeah? Yeah, yeah. So, as you can see on the screen, uh, it's gonna be a program called Daz. Daz 3D. Uh, uh, we're gonna talk about it along the video. So, yeah. Have you been using Daz program. for long? I've been using Daz 3D for two years. If I remember, yeah, I think it's two years. It's been two years. And was it easy to learn, or was it quite difficult? Uh, to be honest. At first, it's quite difficult, but you'll gonna you'll figure it out along the way. Uh, it's it's a very technical skill that you need uh, before you learn this. It looks program. complicated. I'm just taking one look at that interface, and I'm thinking, ugh, yeah. that looks horrible. It's a bit tricky, but when you figure it out, it's gonna be easy. Because, but I, I just want I just wanted to be honest. Uh, I'm not gonna say that it is easy uh, when you when you when you try it first. No, it's gonna be tricky. Uh, you uh, you need to figure out how how this how this uh, how this works. Uh, many tools that you can see on the screen as well. So yeah, we're gonna talk about it. Um, before we get into the kind of technical stuff, Christian, can you tell the guys, especially people tuning in for the first time today? how and why you like to use Daz for your book cover artwork. So most of the work that you do is book cover artwork. Why is Daz good to use alongside Photoshop for creating book covers? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, actually, Daz really, really helped me a lot building concepts, especially when creating a character, creating characters, uh, you know, some others, want to have some specific uh, poses, something like that. Das 3D provides a, a uh, an outcome that that you're looking for, that the other that the, the others want. Uh, it can give you some specific poses, a specific look or angle, lighting or something like that. It really helped me to build a concept that what I'm that that I love and the other wants. And you mainly use Daz specifically, uh, mainly for characters, character design, don't you? For creating whatever characters uh, your, your clients ask for. Yeah, I use that. I use Daz most of the time, but I prefer real people most mostly. Uh, Daz really uh, is just my second option. But yep. if you're gonna ask me. I'm, I still, uh, I still prefer using real photos. And when you, yeah, when you say real people, real, real photos, that's like photo stock photography, yeah. Yeah, real, uh, real people means uh, photography, real photo, no. real, real look of the person. We've spoken before that I'm, I like Daz. Uh, I'm a horror artist. I'm a horror book cover artist. So I use 3D assets all the time for creating creatures mm -hmm. and monsters and sci-fi and horror stuff. But my problem with people using Daz is the the CG faces to me don't really look all that realistic. So I think the best middle ground, <laughs> and I see you do this really, really well, is where you create the pose and the model and the figure, and then you incorporate a photo stock face onto the body. 
What's your thoughts on that, Christian? Yeah, that is true. Actually, does pretty has down downsides as well. Does uh, characters are looking fake? Uh, it is quite near about you know looking a bit real, but if you're gonna look closely, it looks fake. So what I'm doing uh, after the renders, I'm gonna combine series of images to make it real especially the face because face is uh the important part of the process absolutely and if it's a book cover comment. it's the first thing that the viewer locks onto it's the, the first thing that the eyes will gravitate towards um you do some book covers yeah. with the daz face and you do some book covers with photo stock face can you tell me why you do some with the 3d faces and then you do some with the photo stock faces. Is it the difference in clients or how does that work? Why do you do that? Oh yeah. First of all, uh, it is because of the preference. Some others doesn't, I mean, some others don't matter if the, I mean, the faces don't matter to them as long as it is uh, polished, it is a bit more realistic looking than having a obvious fake something like that because when you when you know how it does work uh, already you'll know how to figure out how to make it look like less fake rather than uh you know you know what i mean like uh you can do a concept with that with a bit a bit a little bit real real looking there's a there's so, very few artists out there in the book cover space that can take those cg faces and make them look really really mm -hmm. good um, Amalia yeah. Chitulescu um, is a cover artist that, that kind of does that and I believe that a lot of people I, I think she, she's a, a leader and a lot of people look up to her style um, because she I'm assuming she uses Daz is it Daz that she uses? It is Daz actually she is the pioneer of this <laughs> I, I think so because okay, I saw her me. style and then overnight everybody started using Daz and I'm a guy that owns a stock photography company that sells photo stock and everybody just <laughs> immediately decided that they're um that they're not gonna use photo stocks anymore. So it's interesting for me, but I I it's viewed Amalia as the pioneer, as the one who said, Look, this is a really awesome thing that you can do with three D software, combine combining it with Photoshop. Um, do you do overpainting with your 3d assets that you bring into photoshop oh yeah most of the time uh as, as what i said uh after the render i play a lot of things to make it a bit more real rather than looking fake especially on the eye on the eye uh, area i paint a lot of time I, I, I paint most of the feature of the eye so because eye is the most important when you i mean that's the most important to make it more real. Absolutely, looking. yeah, I get that. Um, mm. in this in this we're talking all over this composite, but I'm sure uh, everybody be really interested here about your workflow. So you've got your your CG figure here that you rendered in Daz. Um, this isn't a full blown Daz tutorial. It's an overview of your workflow. You've brought that into yeah. Photoshop, and you started using the Photoshop processing. Uh, tools for creating lighting shadows and the building elements they are from daz as well is that correct yeah that's correct and did you have to model them from scratch or did they start off as a like a base set that you could buy and then tweak it as you need it i don't i, I never i've never opened daz before in my life so how, how does that work mate uh when you uh... First of all, Daz is free, the, the actual program, it is free uh, and also it has a free content like a very, uh, very simple uh, elements like person, uh, free, they call it a genesis, uh, a real uh, human 3D asset that you can use at first, then the rest is, you know, uh, you have to buy it on their stores. Yeah, I've seen the store. I work with a guy that, that renders out um, Daz assets for us to use in photo manipulation. 
and mm -hmm. um yeah everybody basically stopped buying stock photos and spent all their money on daz plugins and <laughs> assets yeah, and this and that yeah. but um i'm not against it because i've used it loads um not humans that much more so uh creatures i, I will take 3d creatures and chop the 3d creatures up and splice them together and create new creatures um you can get away with a lot more when you're working with fantasy creations as opposed to humans yeah, it's, it's very true. difficult doing this stuff what you do it's because people can instantly see if it's wrong you know if there's human beings involved mm -hmm. okay so what have you got going on uh, on the screen right now with in your photoshop workflow yeah, as you can see here, I'm currently overpainting a lot of details here, especially the shadowing. Oh, okay. Yeah. The the actual positioning of the lighting, the shadow, because uh, if you figure the shadow, uh, I mean, the shadow placement is right, it's going to be, uh, you know, it will look more real because that supports uh, need a lot of needs a lot of support, uh, especially over painting. And you use the brightness and contrast adjustment layer. I never ever use brightness and contrast for some reason. Is that something I should be using for my work? Uh, it depends on you, bro. Because you know if we have a little, uh, we have different approach. Yeah. But brightness, contrast is. It, it is like a, a very, I mean, you know, easy to use rather than doing it manually on paintbrush or doing, a, I mean, experimenting some, some, what do we call this, uh, blend mode. So I just have to use the brightness and contrast itself. Yeah, I've changed since I've been watching all the videos that everybody's been submitting for PM. Uh, YouTube channel. I've, I've changed my workflow loads. So I'm stealing everybody's best ideas. Um, so you're creating the hair strands now, and is this just a normal soft edge brush that you're using here? Uh, yeah, this is just the default uh, brush uh, in Photoshop. You've got airbrush mode on. Uh, what, what, is, what does that airbrush mode mean? Okay. Airbrush uh, provides a very soft touch yep uh you know it really fits the hair because if you use the hard one it, it, it will look like a you know uh very hard it, it has hard edges rather than using the hair or brush because it provides very soft texture as you can see here it has a bit of a glow or a bit blurry rather than using the hard brush okay and why do you why don't you have the um the size the pressure size the the small button to the far right is there a reason why you don't click that in uh pen pressure uh, control you know you know at the top next to the airbrush uh, symbol why, why don't you have that that one clicked on uh the one with the circles yeah yeah right yeah i think it's pen pressure effect size uh, I don't know because hang on now. I'm gonna check my Photoshop. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Go ahead, man. <laughs> I didn't notice it because I just uh, I just use it uh, because Synthetic provides a default uh, Synthetic. Uh, I mean, pen pressure. Yep. Maybe that's why. Ah, oh, okay. Um, so airbrush, you you like to use that mode when you're working by drawing those hair strands. And I noticed you didn't really draw many hair strands. Why did you only do a couple of hair strands? Can you tell me how that works? Because uh, I've never overpainted hair before in my life. <laughs> okay, hair strands are a bit tricky, actually. Uh, uh, it has different kind of approaches different kind of styles if i want to be a bit more realistic uh, it has to be more precise smaller strands right yep. uh, but uh, if i want it to be more a semi-realistic uh, i use a bit more of a uh, bigger strands because if you look at a real human hair 
it has a really really small strands so the the, the strands that i'm doing here is just a support especially for the light okay so those, more, those, those strands are the ones that kind of stand out is, is that the hair finished or do you do more on the hair uh sorry can you repeat um the what i see there with the hair is just is that just a start or do you do more do you add more on to that yeah I, I i believe i added a lot of here, a lot of hair here because uh technically the the rendered uh male uh has a very weird hair strokes <laughs> so i added some so to make it more dramatic as okay. you can see the the lighter the lighter shades are are extras it doesn't have uh, it didn't have in the original rendered file because when people are viewing this as a thumbnail on social media like facebook or as they're scrolling down on amazon and they see the book the the brain isn't going to lock on to every tiny hair strand it is going to get the overall feeling of the hair from those yeah. strands that you kind of pick out and accentuate um right question i'm currently working on a series where i'm learning how to do digital overpainting I've, I've never used a graphics tablet before never used a cintiq um, and i want to learn i want to get good at it so i'm doing experiments and i'm practicing right now my first one was learning how to do um mixed media overpainting the second one i'm learning how to do uh, oil paint overpainting can can you do a lesson with me where you teach me how to do that hair i want to learn how to do that fancy urban fantasy hair that you do so i can be with the cool kids can you teach me how to do that mate yeah, absolutely mate actually i've been waiting for you to use your skin stick <laughs> yep i've started <laughs> i'm you, using it now for a long time, <laughs> so we're gonna do yes, that bro. we'll we'll have that as a lesson yeah i'll i'll be here we'll do it yeah. live and I'll have the Cintiq set up and then you can teach me in real time what to do and how to do it and hopefully I'll learn something, I'll get good at it and then yeah, other people watching they can follow along with us so that's cool, I'm really looking forward <laughs> to that mate happy. yeah sure, sure I'll be very happy to do that bro <laughs> um, you, you're illuminating some of these windows and is that just uh, a white soft edge brush flow 60 yeah. percent um and the paint mode is airbrush yeah that is true uh actually this is this was just a uh, uh, as far as i remember this was just a an experimental approach because i found it dull to have a you know black windows around him yep. so you know what i, I would have done i, I, I would have I I penciled every single one of them but i'm a weirdo <laughs> <laughs> so i've been trying to do it if it's gonna work no, or not but that's what it's so all it's... about um a lot of people get the false impression when they watch youtube videos that everything's just p perfect instantly but the thing is when mm -hmm. you're going for the creative process you try things you make mistakes you have to go back on yourself you have to try something else it doesn't work and with the videos that I'm going to be putting out, I definitely want to show all of the process, you know, mm -hmm, yeah. and, and be honest about yeah, what it takes it to create totally... work like this. Yeah, it, it is a lot of uh, errors, uh, experimental approach. Now, this image that you're working on is a lot wider than... The, the standard book cover is this a full wraparound so is this like a hardback book why, why have you chosen uh, this orientation for this particular piece that's a nice question actually yeah this is for because i knew that this cover will be a wrap so what i did is uh you know did it on the paperback dimension so it's gonna be easy for me to convert it to make it more uh, to make it paperback version, okay. rather than uh, doing a paperback on a very limited canvas. This is a really cool trick you so got going on here. Um, so you got the smudge tool, 
and you are smudging that layer that has all of those clipping masks attached to it to you guys mm -hmm. watching if you want to add a clipping mask you alt and click between the layers um so that was really yeah. cool there what you did with the smoke i like that to get the wispy bits coming off the wings that's that's a cool trick and you said that's a a photoshop brush uh this is a yeah it is a photoshop brush that i downloaded a long time ago you know all of my brushes was downloaded uh were downloaded a long time ago when way back when i was starting so i just had the time the time to play with it uh and get good with that particular brush humor. yeah yeah and you don't actually use that many fancy brushes do you you use quite simple basic brushes yeah, I usually use some um, default brushes from Photoshop. I don't have the time to download some Photoshop brushes because uh, what matter what matters to me is how it's gonna look, uh, how it's gonna look uh, beautiful. Yeah, so um, that that element there that you're putting onto the wings is is that lava or fire or flames? Oh yeah. Uh, that's from the Adobe uh, Adobe Stock website that I downloaded. It is called the Lava, so it is hard to paint it. So what I had to do is find a a photo that matches what I'm thinking. So I had to overpaint it on top of the of the wings, so it would look like it's burning. Yeah, it's a good effect, Something and like some that. things are really difficult to paint digitally. I, I use well. Because I didn't have a tablet, I pretty much exclusively just botched photo stocks together for almost everything. But I'm hoping to yeah. be a bit more like you now on with elements that I need, be able to paint those elements and, and take things to the next level. Yeah, that is true. Photo is is big help for me. So it will look more real. What's this going on at the edge of the leg? What are you doing there? Yeah, I'm painting some lighting uh, to make it like it's reflecting on the on the light, something like that to make it like she uh, he is on the scene because it's it doesn't make sense if no light coming to him. So what I'm what I did is painting some light effect on him like an outline to make it sure that the light is uh, coming right at him. You're sampling colors and painting in texture details on that kind of legging thing. Do you have a hotkey set up on the Cintiq or are you using the keyboard to do the alt? Oh yeah, I'm just using the keyboard at all times. So you like cause... to use the keyboard for most because... shortcut operations. You don't you don't program the hotkeys on the Cintiq? No, because it's it's. Uh, I mean, I used I used to use the, the keyboard rather than using the synthetic hotkeys, because you know it will. A keyboard saves me a lot of time, so I use it most of the time. And you use the rotate tool there. Um, is it hold down R and then rotate? Yeah, that's true. To help Just, you get the, uh, the hotkeys. Yeah. Just the default. Uh, hat keys from the keyboard yeah you were right the r control r see i'm learning um i can't actually use that shortcut at the moment i can't use a rotate tool because i've got um a graphics processor problem with my photoshop that i can't i haven't been able to fix and i can't <laughs> use oil paint which is actually a good thing because it means i have to learn how to overpaint for real and one of the other things mm -hmm. i can't use is rotate it it, it grays it out it says you can't use this while well, your graphics processor isn't working. So that's something I've got to figure out because I want to be able to rotate <laughs> the canvas. Yeah, rotating canvas really helps too. So you can you can hit the right angle. So, you know, some, for some brushes strokes, it really helps me to find a good spot to make me more comfortable about it. Yeah. So I used to... Yeah. You got some more hair strands going on here. 60% yeah. flow, airbrush, bog standard, soft edge brush. So aside from a tablet, you don't really need loads of fancy stuff to do this type of work. It's overpaint work. Yeah, uh, this uh, this work consisted mostly of overpainting approach. Yeah, as you can see here, a lot of 
uh, painted uh, painted hair strands, painted lighting, painted shadowing, and some you know painted you smokes. A lot of clipping masks there. Um, there's loads of clipping masks uh, stacked up on mm -hmm. that above that group there. And when you was using um, the kind of hue to add the lighting to the edge of the guy you didn't put it on a special layer mode you just had that on normal layer mode and a flow of 60 is that right yeah yeah so i mean for the normal mo what do you mean sorry for the normal mode um the the layer modes when you was painting the the rim light on the guy's back it was just a mm -hmm. normal layer mode it wasn't set to overlay or soft light or dodge or oh, anything yeah. like that got it so I mean, I just had to make the same color from the sky. Yep. So it so it would it would look like uh, I mean they have the same color, so it doesn't have it didn't have to be a very in, in a very special mode or layer mode. Just I, I, technically, I just copied the color of the sky and painted into his back. Okay, I've got so it, I've got it another is less thing. Complicated. I've got another thing to ask you, Christian. Um, I'm yeah, just sure. asking Go for ahead. loads of things now. Okay, you know I said that I wanted you to teach me how to do that stuff with the hair, with the strands. Mm -hmm. Can we do another lesson where you teach me how to do those edge lighting effects, the rim lighting? So, oh, yeah. So like you had there on the guy's back, I would like to know how to do that. I would like to learn. Will, will you be able to do yeah. a video lesson with me that we could put on the channel? Absolutely. Absolutely, bro. It's a fun thing to do because, you know, lighting is a very, a very good effect that makes your concept uh, lively. Yeah, I've, I've always avoided it because my style is very photorealistic and not stylized. I've kind of avoided yeah. all of that type of work. I've always admired it. I've always liked it. Um, mm -hmm. And, and I'm, I believe I can use those techniques and do it in a slightly different way to most other guys but that's um a very distinctive style in the urban fantasy genre oh, yeah. isn't it in 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 publishing yeah it is required actually <laughs> because most of the fantasy requires a lot of uh you know it has to be eye catchy yep uh it, it has to be colorful it has to be bright rather than you know uh because you know it has we have a lot of genres like horror, so it has to be dark. So in fantasy, uh, I think it can be balanced. It can be dark, but most of the time I use it uh, more like a brighter one, a combination of a dark uh, approach as well. As you can see here, we have a dark uh, areas, but we have some focal point. Yeah, yeah. This yeah, is if, you, if you see what I, I mean as well. Yeah, I, I saw that you were creating new layers set to overlay. And you were manually painting in colors and tones mm -hmm. and and what that also does is it's softening the environment to make it less sharp and photographic and more stylized oh, yeah. which is um which is really cool really really cool yeah so what i did was just a final touch up to make it more blend uh i mean blended into the scene yeah so that's a wrap. Yeah, it was really, really cool to have a look into your workflow there. It's given me loads of ideas <laughs> for other things that we can do, other projects and other things that we can share with the viewers. Christian, mm -hmm. is there anything yeah. in particular that you think that I would benefit from that you could show me? So we've mentioned the hair, we've mentioned the edge lighting. What about how you do those... Um, tones on the backgrounds like you did with the color dodge and the overlay yeah that's that's what what i'm going to uh to say what, what i was going to say to you right now because uh lighting uh i mean you know the lighting effect the outline and the color dodge are partners you know uh it, it is required it is part of the package that's it really has cool. to be yeah, that's epic. Well, thanks so much for jumping on today, Christian. I really do appreciate sure thing, it. Bro. And I look forward to doing more of these with you. See you later, mate. Bye. <laughs> See you, bro. Thank you.
kudos to you for getting to the end of the video. Maximum respect. If you did enjoy this format where we're talking on screen, please do leave a comment, like and subscribe because that lets us know that you was into this and we'll produce lots more. So that's a wrap for today, guys. Appreciate you tuning in. I'll catch you in the next video. See you then.